Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. In our next conversation with Dr. Jason Olson, the author of The Burning Book, we're going to talk a little bit about his baptism and his LDS mission. We'll also talk about what it was like to come up growing in a Jewish background, and, what, and he had to decide, am I going to date Mormon women or Jewish women? And it actually wasn't easy for him to make that decision. So we'll find out more on our next conversation. Don't forget to sign up to... Um, gospeltangents.com slash contest and you could win this copy of the burning book I'll be giving it away next week so uh, make sure you sign up by Tuesday and uh, I'll probably announce the winner at the end of next week so sign up today now back to our conversation and so you know in high school I I dated a Jewish girl right <laughs> because you know that's that's who I was um, I I will admit I um, I did ask a, a Latter-day Saint girl out um, for homecoming or something in high school um, just to see, you know, what it would be like to, you know, to date a Mormon. Um, and it was, it, it, it went really bad, Rick. Oh, no. It was, uh, <laughs> it was like, um, I just felt totally, totally weird, totally awkward. And she was, she probably just didn't like me. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it, it I, I thought it was like, oh, it's cause I'm a, you know, cause I'm a Jew and, you know, but you know, it's, it, I, I don't think it had anything. I, I'm not sure, but it didn't go well. I'm not a member of the church. So of course, as you know, and you know, especially in strong, you know, stalwart, uh, Latter-day Saint, Arizona, you know, it's definitely frowned upon. To, to date a, you know a non a non member um, and so that that it could have been there, but I, I definitely felt like she was just very standoffish she was kind of like oh i'm I'm only going to homecoming with this this Jewish guy because he's interested in the church, but he's not a member yet, so I, I can't get you know I don't know I was just like all right I don't this is not really I mean I'm only a teenager right I'm sixteen may, or probably sixteen at the time. So I just decide, well, I want to be a Jew anyway, and I'm not, you know, I'm, so I, so I dated, uh, I began, you know, dating, pre- you know, pretty, pretty seriously, a Jewish girl uh, that I, I had known from childhood, um, you know, what, you know, one of my, my best friends who I just grew up with, right? I, I was, I was raised Jewish, and I was, I kept, I was still going to Hebrew high and taking the Hebrew class with her and. So I said, okay, it's not working out with the, the Mormon girls, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll just date people, you know, who I am. Um, but then in senior year, you know, just before, for, before prom, senior prom, right, the big, the big deal, uh, Shay, my, my Latter-day Saint buddy um, of all those years, you know, we were trying to work this out during high school because... You know, they, they knew, I had told Shay and Dave and also Matt, Matt Nelson who, who came along, they knew I believed in the Book of Mormon, they knew I believed in Jesus, but I wanted to stay a Jew. I didn't want to assume the identity of a Latter-day Saint. So they knew I was dating this Jewish girl and, and uh, Shay's, Shay's girlfriend at the time was best friends with, with the Jewish girl. And so... Shay told me that she had, the Jewish Jewish girlfriend had started kind of seeing somebody else, oh. I guess, in addition to me. So um, that, that I wasn't, you know, we were all in high school, you know, and we're just, you know, it's, it's high school romances, right? But, you know, I was like thinking pretty seriously about it because like I was kind of hanging on to my Jewish identity with this relationship right I mean I mean I was like you know I'm you know and I was a kid and you know I was I was just an immature high school kid but I I mean this was the I was in high school and this was the Jewish girl right um so if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stay Jewish it's it's got it's got to work itself out somehow um but after I got that news 
I was just, I, you know, just, I was heartbroken, just like, you know, any other, every, everybody has, has felt that. Um, but it was, the, it was the rupture. It was the rupture that, um, that kind of, uh, kind of broke me away from my Jewish identity because I was, I was so heartbroken and, and I really, you know, I wanted to live this, to continue this Jewish life. Uh, but I also wanted to follow Jesus and follow the Book of Mormon. And I had kind of tied all those things up in, in a high school relationship, which is, is not fair to, to anybody, you know. But um, so uh, I found out that news and, and Shay and Dave and Matt, they were with me when I got this news, um, you know, uh, and we were we were like in a hotel in San Antonio, and and I was you know I was just you know, I was just heartbroken and I was crying and you know couldn't eat couldn't sleep, um, but they invited me to pray, and um, so I started praying and we prayed together you know so I was I was they were my roommate you know we were these roommates in this hotel. What were you doing in San Antonio? Oh, we, we were on a we were on a choir trip because we were all in choir. So that was you know the Jews and the Mormons and <laughs> in choir together. Um, the performers, right? Performers. Um, I'm sure Donny Osmond has all kinds of <laughs> Jewish friends. So I mean that's the the show business, right? I'm not you know, but anyway. Um, and I started to just get a taste of of peace just a taste i was still you know overwhelmed with 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 heartbreak you know 17 year old me um but then matt nelson uh who is he's actually shay's cousin he had just gotten uh the melchizedek priesthood because he was older than us um and he was because he i think he was already 18 and uh and he was getting ready for his mission or something Really old and mature. Yeah, really, really old and mature. Uh, and he, you know, said, "Jason, can I, would you like, would you like a blessing, priesthood blessing?" And I was like, "I don't know what a, you know, I don't even know what that is." Even though, you know, I knew the Book of Mormon, but I, I mean, I heard, I didn't know what a priesthood blessing was because I had only been to church, you know, I think twice in all those high school years. I, I mean, I was like, I'll take whatever I can get, you know, I'm. I am, you know, I was heartbroken and just really, it was, it was rough. So he laid his hands on my head and, and he, uh, and he gave me a blessing and he just, you know, promised me that everything was going to be okay. And, and heavenly father was well aware of me and, you know, that, um, you know, the heavenly father had, you know, was, had plans for me and, and, um, that I, well, and, and he and he also invited me to repent, right? And in the in the uh, in the in the blessing, and and I think said something about baptism. And I mean, it was you know we were we were all I was seventeen at the time, and and I just started to ponder it. And I got back home to to Scottsdale, and in a, in an extremely immature way, broke up with the with the girl. Um, but, uh, you know, and I, obviously we all have our regrets and, and how we, you know, how we could be mean or, um, but you know, I've grown a lot since I was 17 years old. Um, I hope. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I had this moment where I was like, okay, I, now I, now what do I do? And all these Latter-day Saint friends are going on missions and Matt Nelson had a big impact on me because he was, he was, I think he was almost 19 because he was like a, he was like a year older than us. And, um, and he went on his mission, you know, that summer after we graduated to Scotland. And I was just, I really admired Matt and he, he was so excited to go on his mission and he kept talking about it and, you know, this adventure, um, <laughs> And I started to like dream of going on a mission. 
And, you know, part of me, it's a way to run away from home and run away from your problems and run away from, for me, these challenges with identity that I'm dealing with. And am I a Jew? Am I, should I be a Latter-day Saint? And, um, I, yeah, this idea of going on a mission really started to appeal to me and where I could just just run away from home and figure myself out and join the circus, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and my, my way of joining the circus, right? Yeah. And, I, and I say that with all, with all sacredness. And, but, um, you know, and, and for all the coming-of-age experiences that people have. You know? um, and so I bide my time. I go to the University of Arizona. You know, all these other buddies are going to BYU, and I'm, you know, I, I, I hadn't really got, got that far, but. Now, I have a big question about that because Arizona, that's in Tucson, and Scottsdale is much closer to Tempe, right? Aren't you, aren't you going to the yes, rival school? Yes, but I, 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 had to, I had to get away enough, right? I had to live in the dorms. I, as you can tell, like I had a lot of figuring myself out to do. <laughs> so, um, yes, I was I was a Sun Devils fan, still am. I mean, but um, I had to get you know it's a two hour drive, so it's it's enough distance that I can. But now you're a bear down wildcat, huh? That that's that's tricky. <laughs> I, I still today I'd say yeah, I still probably root for the Sun Devils. Um, I don't know if the Sun Devils and the Cougars are playing. I guess I'm a mess, so I'm not sure what to do. Yeah, do you have a Mormons for Devils shirt? <laughs> I, I always got to chuckle out I, that I, when I, I should get State that. Yeah, BYU. I should get that. Um, <laughs> I want one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had Jake the Snake Plumber and uh, back in my day, and pa- and Pat Tillman. You yeah, know, bless his bless his soul. Pat, that's a whole oh, other yeah. story. Pat Tillman was really inspired me. Um, I, I didn't even write, obviously didn't write about that in the book, but I would say Pat Tillman was one who inspired me to military service because he was a hero, you know, right, oh, right really? in my, yeah. my coming of age years. And yeah, I mean, when, when we... Now there might be some people who don't know who Pat Tillman is, but I'm, I'm a sports fan. I absolutely know. But tell, tell my non-sports fans who Pat Tillman is. Yeah, so he was, was um, I believe he was a safety, yeah, he was a safety um, for the, the Sun Devils and um, Arizona State. And he was a superstar and he had long hair and he was just this bohemian hero. And, uh, and then he got drafted by the Cardinals and he played for our professional team for a number of years and he was just just a hometown hero I mean and uh, 9-11 happened and that was a coming of age you know that was just a yeah coming of age moment for me I was a junior in high school and Pat Tillman you know gives up this you know his lucrative contract with the Cardinals to become a a green beret like a army special forces and um and go to afghanistan and um it, it just just amazing like the sacrifice uh of of giving up this for a time this this very lucrative career in the nfl to serve your country and and there's there's a complicated story there's a you know great documentary about what went into his decision making and um, you know, and killed by tragic, uh, accidental, friendly fire, um, which I, I don't want to yeah. go into that um, <laughs> here. But um, but but his deci- decision to serve, and you know that nine eleven was was my generation's Pearl Harbor. That's what Pat Tillman did for me. Right. So I wrote. I did write about my grandfather, Al. Um, you know, just, you know, bless him, rest his soul, just the most beautiful, wonderful Jewish grandfather ever. Um, and he was, you know, he was a World War II vet. And um, 
served in the army as a medic, and he, he has like a, a Nazi dagger that he, I don't know how he got it, and someday I'll, I'll find, figure out the story, but he took home a, a Nazi dagger, you know, this American Jewish Captain America, you know, and, um, hmm. and, uh, and just always proud of his service, and yeah, but, but Pat Tillman made me realize, okay, this is like, this is like our generation's Pearl Harbor, you know, I gotta, I gotta do something, I gotta be like Grandpa, um, and so anyway, that's that in a in a in a tangent. <laughs> there's a th- that that's how that came to be. <laughs> every every NFL fan I think really admires Pat Tillman because it's you know very patriotic what he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, if Pat Tillman is going to join the military so. and you give up that his NFL career, you know, I'm just a nobody from Scottsdale. I, I you know I can I can serve the country, so. Yeah, I will just add really quick because we're on the tangents here. Um, <laughs> so Pat Tillman was an yes. atheist, and I remember watching. I think it was the same documentary, but one of his buddies, when they were coming down with fire, was a Mormon, and he was like, "We should pray." And Pat Tillman's like, "Now is not the time to pray. <laughs> wow, <laughs> now is the time to fight." Wow. And so, uh, yeah, so that was a nice little interesting, interesting. little tidbit there yeah. too. So. Well, if yeah, any Pat yeah. Tillman fans, yeah, I mean, I just, I he's he was a hero to me. I mean, a hero of my, of my generation yeah. of Arizona kids, a hero. He inspired a lot of us, yeah. and a lot of my friends yeah. joined the military too. And we were we were nine eleven boys and girls. So now I'm still doing it, but <laughs> that's another story. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. in the Navy now, yeah. right? So. Um, anyway, nothing but but honor and and respect for Pat Tillman and his family, and for for any of them that 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 might hear this. I just yeah. just love the man and look up to him. Yeah, I look up to him too. What he did was was amazing sacrifice. So, um, so and let, let's fast forward a little bit here because I know you spent some time going from Arizona, and then you spent some time at BYU, and you served a mission. Remind us where you served a mission. New Jersey, New Jersey, Morristown. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so I, um, yeah, so I mean, that was the moment where I could get baptized. And I was, you know, I had tied up my Jewish identity. I was still studying with the rabbi. I broke up with the, with the Jewish girlfriend. And, um, and so I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for something radical. And, um, yeah, I, well, I, ha- I have to preface it before I get baptized. I, I spend three full days with, with Rick Ross, who's, uh, who's an anti cult <laughs> specialist. And I mean, you yeah, can read that, you can read that, that in the book, you know, it's, uh, that was, that was heavy. And he just, he just punched me in the face, metaphorically speaking, not, not physical, <laughs> but just um, punch me in the the soul, I guess you could say, punch me in the soul with <laughs> you know anti mormon everything um, that he could that he could muster, um, but I do not respond to secularism that 's the thing i i mean I, you know I, I I can be respectful i can but i 'm just not i don 't have a secular bone in my body. I'm just I'm just completely wired as a religious human being, so I just get along a lot better with the rabbis, you know. <laughs> and, and so, right. so I didn't I didn't have a good experience with Rick Ross because he's he's very secular and it just wasn't a good approach. But it caused me to run away from home, and I and I ran away to Utah, and Rabbi Raphael was, you know, hey, spend spend a Shabbat, spend one last Shabbat with. With, with with us, with the Jewish people, before you get baptized, and I'll never forget that. Um, and and um, and I should have, you know, I should have just. I was, but I was just like, Rabbi, I'm I'm going to, I'm going to Utah. <laughs> I'm I'm running away because um, the the Rick Ross experience was very, very traumatic. It was, it was spiritual bullying. 
I mean, um, and also, and I, I have no problem saying that. I think I think Rick Ross was was a bully to me, and he was taking advantage of me. For, you know, I'm 17 years old. Um, but I, uh, yeah, so I went with Dave, and then I came back, and, and I was finally baptized. <laughs> and and it was and it wasn't in secret. Just to to tie that knot, it was lots of people were there, and even you know uh, the Jewish ex girlfriend came and. She was the only Jewish person there, and and we, you know, we forgave each other, and and the, you know, we reconciled, and um, and you know, she was she was, she was like a best friend. So it was, it was, even though she didn't agree with what I was doing at all, she, just to like have some closure, you know, um, and just you know, as a friend, just to support my this new life that i was like about to embark on so um so yeah so i i I get i go to university of arizona and then i get i get sent to new jersey (laughs) on my mission so and 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 it's everything i it's everything i dreamed of um because i i get this uh this time to to join the circus so to speak and 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 just kind of get to know myself and and come to terms with all this this drama and um, and complexity of of my you know of my coming of age and and I was yeah I was uh, I love being a missionary I was I was very aggressive um, I think what's what's most curious about it is my final area was Rockland County New York and. Uh, I, I go to New Jersey Morristown, but we have a little piece of New York, right? Um, but also, New Jersey mm-hmm. is is very Jewish as well. So it's ironic that I'm even called there. Um, but my fellow missionaries were were always talking about the legend of of Rockland County, and and I, it's it's like everybody in the mission was just hoping for the time to come when Elder Olson would go to Rockland County. <laughs> Because, uh, and, and everybody was talking about it, you know, when's Elder Olson going to go to Rockland County? When's he going to go? And, and, and the mission president, you know, being wise and just allowing me to try to, like, mature as much as you can in two years, saves Rockland County for the end. And it's, it's uh, if you want to look, Wikipedia, it's, it's one of the highest, concent- I think it is the highest concentration of Jewish people in any county in the United States. Um, so now here I am. I mean, I'm, what do I do? Um, and I'm, I'm surrounded by Orthodox Jews. So, I mean, I studied with Rabbi Raphael and I was familiar with this tiny little uh, Orthodox community in Arizona. It's grown more now um, in Arizona. But, uh, I mean, these are, you know, s- sometimes ultra-Orthodox Jews. You know, Haredim. And I'm surrounded by Jewish covenant that I had just, like, kind of run away from. You know? <laughs> and, um, mm-hmm. but, but not really. I mean, that's the whole paradox of this whole story. I mean, it's like I ran away from it, but, I, but here it is. And uh, I see Rabbi Tovia Singer again. And for that I, I, I told you about before, Mitch, the, the, the role-playing Mitch. And my, compa- right. my companions were so nervous when we... All right, I, I think... I, no, I only had... I think I just had one companion. Yeah. And he, I, I'll have to... He hopefully, he hears this episode. Caulfield, yeah. Elder Caulfield. You'll have to send it to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and we're, we're still friends. And, and we find him in the Yellow Pages, right? Because, you know, those days, you, you got to look up in the Yellow Pages. I, I think, I think uh, Rabbi Tovia Singer is in this area. And I look him up, and sure, sure enough, there he is. I call him up, and, you know. This was back when we had the phone books, right? That's right, the Yellow, the yellow Pages. <laughs> and, I, and I look up his number in the Yellow Pages. Yeah. And I, Rabbi Tovia Singer, uh, this is this is Elder Jason Olson. <laughs> you know, you you came to my synagogue in 1999, 
And so now we're in, what, 2006. And um, yeah, uh, I, I need to, I want to come talk to you and about, about my journey since, since I last saw you. <laughs> you know? and, uh, <laughs> and so we go in, my companion and I, and, he, and my companion's really nervous because this, this guy is a trained counter-missionary. And I, everything's gonna be, everything's gonna be all right, right Elder. Everything's gonna be okay. We we gotta do this, you know. I, I I can't I can't be sent to this area and not see the rabbi, you know, and and just see what happens. Right. So we go in there into into his apartment, and he's so gracious. Um. And like I said, I'm I'm a religious guy. I I I really just don't have a secular bone in my body or my soul. So, um, so, you know, I still, I I have reverence for the rabbis. Um, and he says, and he says, Jason, Hashem has brought you back to me. (laughs) Hashem being the the name of God that the Jewish, you know, religious, you know, religious Jewish people will call God Hashem, the name. Um, so just a caveat, but, uh, Hashem has brought you back to me. And I just, I'm just puzzled. And, and so here he is, like, being himself. And I'm thinking, all those years ago when, when he was Mitch, have I accepted Jesus in my heart, right? And now he said, has, Hashem has brought, and I'm like, has God brought me back to, <laughs> to Rabbi W. Singer? <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm asking myself the same question, this charismatic rabbi. And I'm like, like, yeah, I was like, maybe he's right. Maybe God, it, I mean, I don't know what that means, but um, he gives me this chumash, which I still have on my bookshelf. A chumash is, is the five books of Moses with the classic uh, rabbinical commentaries. So it's, it's called chumash, the five and he gives it to me, and he says, I want you to have this. This is yours. You know, and, and, he, uh, and then he invites me to, like, to stay there in Muncie, New York, and, uh, and study at the yeshiva, or Sameach. And eventually, I, I, do, I do go to this yeshiva, uh, the same yeshiva, but in Jerusalem. <clears throat> and uh, he challenges me to to study the Bible in, in Hebrew. Because he said, you can't, you can't make this decision to be a Latter-day Saint for the rest of your life when you haven't even studied your own Bible in Hebrew. And I said, oh, okay. I mean, I know a little Hebrew. I, know, I, I had a bar mitzvah. I know a little Hebrew. But I, I can't say that I, I'm a Hebrew master, you know, that I, you know, I could just pick up and just read the Bible in Hebrew and just understand it like that. So I'm like, okay, okay, Rabbi, you've got me there. I, I'm, I will accept your challenge to study the Bible in Hebrew. But I'm going to do it my own way. Um, and I start thinking, you know, I'm going to go to BYU, and I'm going to study, I'm going to major in Hebrew Bible at BYU. <laughs> so, okay. Um, and then I, you know, I, I kind of want to, I, I kind of want to like jar Rabbi Singer, so it just because I'm, I, I, I sometimes I just want to be provocative. I've, I, I hope, hopefully I've matured a little bit, but since then, but I just look at him and I say, I know Jesus Christ is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, uh, and Rabbi Singer's like, okay, um, Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> and um, he's like, I want you to return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I was like, okay. You know, I mean, this was, you know, this was a real dialogue. Um, and, uh, and I think we talked a little bit about Israel. You know, like Rabbi Singer said, if you don't, if you don't want to study at the yeshiva here, that's Okay you know, why don't you go study at a yeshiva in Israel? You know, and and really 
get in touch with your roots. Before you, before you just decide to give your whole life to, to the church. And I, I okay, you know, I, I mean, I missed, you know, studying with Rabbi Raphael. You know, I'm, I mean, here I am, just my companion and I doing our morning scripture study, which is great. It's not the same as studying with a, you know, with a trained rabbi. So I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of this. And so Rabbi Singer talking about return, you know, return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, return to the Torah, return to the land of Israel. And I, I cannot get it out of my, my mind or my heart. I'm just, I got to return. I got to return. So I go to BYU because I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start studying the, 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 uh, the Bible in Hebrew. And so I take all the, I take all the Hebrew classes at, at, at BYU. That, that first year I've got, um, I've got two... Two modern Hebrew classes, two biblical Hebrew classes. So four Hebrew classes. You know, I'm like, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm going to take Rabbi Singer's challenge. Um, but then I'm thinking about uh, how am I going to get to Israel? So, of course, I was just like, oh, I'll just apply to the BYU Jerusalem Center. You know, that's easy way. You know, and I can, I can go study right. Hebrew there and I could you go study the scriptures um, cause I'm like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the, you know, I'm just, you know, that's a little, I don't need to go to the Jewish yeshiva. I could, I could study in the BYU yeshiva, I guess was my, my thinking, but, um, I didn't get in, I didn't get into the BYU Jerusalem center. So even though, you know, in my application, I was like, I, I really need to go guys, but it was a, it was a lottery, right? So it was a lottery. Um, and then I, so I go back to Rabbi Raphael and I, I got to go to Israel. And he's like, yeah, yeah. What, what do we, let's, let me help you. So Rabbi Raphael goes to the birthright Israel trip foundation people. And, you know, Jason has had this, uh, complicated life, you know, he's made some un-Jewish decisions, but (laughs) <laughs> but give, give him a chance, you know, like let him go to Israel with the birthright. You know, he, he's, he's born a Jew. Now you had already applied to this and That's been right. denied once before, So I've right? been denied by birthright before, and then I, now I was re- rejected from the BYU Jerusalem Center. So I'm, I'm just a poor little college student. Like, how am I going to get to Israel? It's third time's the charm, though. Third time's the charm. So, so Rabbi Raphael intervenes, and all right, let's... Let's get you to Israel. And he's hoping, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I'll study in the yeshiva. <clears throat> but I kind of take like this like high-tech, secular Israeli road. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I go to like greater Tel Aviv and I go work, uh, do an internship at the Center for Jewish Arab Economic Development and I'm trying to help uh, Israeli Arabs, Israeli Palestinians um, increase their, you know, economic and social mobility. And I've always been very committed to, you know, equality in Israel and peace and human rights with, with the Palestinians. I mean, I, I literally, my first job in Israel was to help Palestinians economically. So anyway, um, but nevertheless... I I was a Zionist. I am a Zionist. I I felt I needed to return to the land as a Jewish person, as or as a a Latter Day Saint from the tribe of Judah, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so so I went and um, you know went to the Western Wall. Uh, also went to the Temple Mount with a, a State Department friend. You know, and, and this is where, where we talk about uh, the, the Medichlorians that you experience in Star Wars. That uh, <laughs> when I went to the Temple Mount and the Western the Wall, force. yeah, I, I felt this, this concentration of, of divinity and holiness. Just felt, you know, that, just felt that, that God was so present there, so concentrated, so, so thick. Um, like just 
the air is full of divine particles, you know. Um, and, and what the Jewish tradition calls Shekhinah, the presence of God, literally. Um, and so I, yeah, so I, I, I felt that the mag- magnetism, the compass, the true north for me. Um, and, and why, I, I mean, I finally learned why Jewish people pray toward Jerusalem uh, three times a day if you're, you know, if you're, if you're doing it halakhically. Um, because that's, you know, that's where, that's the source. That's where things are, are clustered. Um, and I felt it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt. I, it was a, it was a sacred experience. And, um, and yeah, I, I eventually got to this Orsameach that they have in Muncie, New York, that I found, on, that I learned about on my mission. And then I, I studied for a time at the one in Jerusalem and, um, and loved it. I've always loved it, uh, you know, appreciated the Jewish learning. And, um, but, I mean, that's, uh, so that, uh, hopefully that uh, ties up some, some major loose ends uh, of the story that uh, I think will be, be interesting to you and, and, and listeners. Well, that's really interesting. I think one of the things that I found really interesting and maybe a little strange was that, so you're in Israel, you're dressing as an Orthodox Jew, which maybe I need to know that. Is that like with the little ringlets and the hair and, and everything? No, like that? no, not, okay. not, not to that extent. Because <laughs> no. you're bald now. <laughs> Couldn't even do it. <laughs> so, um, so when you say you dress Orthodox, we're not thinking like the guy with the big beard and the ringlets and all that. What, what do you mean by Orthodox first? And also, you also went to the LDS Church, so you you were kind of a dual identity. Seems like that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's a it's a great question, Rick. Um, yeah, I um, when I came in when I came into the country. Uh, I think I mentioned so. I, I initially. Was uh, went on a birthright Israel trip um, for for Jewish kids. Um, I I had applied to the BYU Jerusalem Center, but uh, was not accepted. But I, I still had this passion to to go to Israel to to explore my Jewish identity to to try to figure out you know what it, what it is that God wanted from me in life. Um, and so when I I had made a conscious decision. Um, that I wanted to be perceived by other Jewish people as someone who wants to keep the, the commandments of God. So uh, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I was, I didn't look like an ultra Orthodox Jew, but uh, I just wore uh, a kippah, um, a yarmulke or skull cap, and I wore um, a talit or a, um, a prayer shawl. With the fringes, um, anyway, for those who watch the Chosen, you can see the, you know, the Jesus and the apostles all wear their, you know, all wear their seat seat or their their fringes. With the in the ancient times, they had the uh, tehillis, which the the blue dye from um, uh, on on their on their fringes. Um, but th- that's not a, a practice in the in modern times. But in any case, I wore that because. You know, if you're wearing a, a skull cap and the, the fringes or the, the prayer shawl, it's a sign to others that you really want to keep the commandments. And they and, and when you're in Israel, that, that's just kind of accepted that you're you're a religious person just uh, by wearing that. And <clears throat> um, you know, when I was on the trip with uh, there was Israeli soldiers and um, and you know. And girls, and you know, you wanted you wanted to, them to know that hey, I'm I'm somebody who keeps the commandments. So um, it just makes uh, choice choices a lot easier. Um, so that you know, people are respectful of that. It, you don't have to explain it to them; they just know just by how you're you're dressed. Um, and and even when I uh, had like job interviews, I would just you know, I'd wear a, the, the skull cap and the uh, prayer shawl and so the the employers knew immediately that I was somebody that at the bare minimum just you know wanted to keep the Sabbath day holy so um, which was Saturday 
<laughs> right, which was Saturday. Well, I guess <clears> Friday, <throat> Friday night to Saturday night, right? That's right, think? yeah. So um, so I, I did have an inter- experience because I, uh, I, I just was like, oh, I'm not going to wear the – I'm not going to wear the skull cap and the prayer shawl. And I had a job interview and and um and the the employer said I think that I actually got the job and the employer said, "Well, uh you know, you didn't you didn't wear uh you know any any religious garb, but now you're you're asking to keep the to take the Sabbath day off, you know, <laughs> and and not work." And and then I realized Oh, oh my goodness! Like I, I have to wear this attire so that I can all the time, or they're gonna, they're gonna think that I'm, I'm not religious and that I don't want to keep this. You reject you, right? And like a Jack Mormon kind of thing, <laughs> right? Right. So then I, and then I was like, oh well, you know, and, and it just kind of made me realize, like, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get the Sabbath day off to, to worship unless I, unless I wear this. So I started to wear it all the time to work. So, you know, the the employers were like, okay, well, because there are, you know, we'll give this guy the Sabbath day off because there are Israelis who are secular and they, you know, they don't mind working on the Sabbath. Um, but uh, in any case, that's that's kind of what I learned about the culture. And I was like, well, I, I want to keep the Sabbath day holy. Uh, I, and yeah, I did. It was so I could go to go to church. Um <clears throat> but on Friday nights, I did go to uh, I did go to Shabbat, Jewish Shabbat. Um, so in, as a as a church, we didn't you know we didn't do anything on Friday night. Um, so I would usually go to a synagogue in the uh, in the neighborhood where I was living, and and it was really nice. And um, I do the Friday night prayers, and then almost every time, one of the families in the synagogue. Um, would invite me to you know Friday night Shabbat dinner, so I would, mm-hmm. so I'd I'd at least get to to spend that that Friday night portion of the Sabbath with uh, a Jewish family, and then on Saturday morning, I would ride my bike to uh, a Latter Day Saint family, and uh, and then I they, I would go with them to church in um in downtown Tel Aviv because it's it's pretty 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 far away so. Um, so they, yeah. So that's kind of how I, uh, I would, I would work out Shabbat and, and I, I and I, 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 w- I would do both, but uh, so I didn't feel any discomfort. Um, like I said, I just, at least in Israel, you know, you want to show people that you want to, you want to keep the commandments, and it does make it, it does make a difference. So, hmm. interesting. Yeah. I also found it interesting that you, um, I guess because your mother was Jew- Jewish, so you had Jewish birthright, and so you could gain Israeli citizenship. Can, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, yeah. So I was, um, I, I went in the country, and I, I was really, really considering uh, making Aliyah, which is what is the Hebrew term, means to go up. <laughs> You're going up mm-hmm. to... The land of Israel. <clears throat> Even before I had come into the country, because I was reading the scriptures and I was reading the prophets, um, Isaiah and Ezekiel and Zechariah and um, Amos and and all these prophets about the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. And then I also had that experience with Rabbi Tovia Singer again, where you know he said, you know, Hashem has brought you back to me. <laughs> and and it you know so all those things kind of made me a Zionist, um, even though I and I was a Latter Day Saint at the same time. Even I was a return missionary, but there was really no contradiction between being from the tribe of Judah and and wanting to return to the land of Israel. And um, I, and I, I I started reading about Orson Hyde. I, I had no idea about Orson Hyde because you know I wasn't raised in the church at all. So, but I started reading about it, and I I read about Orson Hyde's mission and how the Prophet Joseph Smith, you know, sent him to Jerusalem to dedicate the land for the return of the Jewish people. 
So I read all those things and I, I really saw no contradiction between what I had learned as a member of the church and what I had learned as a Jewish person and um, it made me want to want to go um, and, and try to try to settle you know in in the land of Israel <clears throat> and so um, when I got there I I had just been in the country for a month or two and um, you know I, I was just doing an internship as I mentioned with the Center for Jewish Arab Economic Development and I, I was starting to run out of money <laughs> you know but um, I, I'd only I was just like a, a poor college student, and I uh, and my parents were supportive, but uh, you know they weren't just like gonna, you know, just fund me to just live in Israel for free. So I just it became a very practical question of you know I need to get a job, even if even if it's a part time job where I can I can work and also study because you know I had only completed two years of college by then. So, so that's why I decided. No, I, I definitely uh, I want to stay here, and and so that's why when I decided to go to the Ministry of Interior and apply for Israeli citizenship, and in order to do that, I needed to get a letter from an Orthodox rabbi that the chief rabbinate of the state of Israel recognizes. So that's when I reached back out to Rabbi Raphael and in Phoenix, Arizona, and, you know, hey, I want to stay in Israel. I want to I wanna contribute to the country. You know, I, I'm not here to be a missionary, and um, which was easy to say because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has no, a no proselytizing pro- policy. So, you know, I, I could say with all, all my heart, I'm not here to I'm not here to be a missionary rabbi. Um, I'm here to, to build a country. I'm here to be a Zionist. Um, if they want me to serve in the army, I'll serve in the army. And, you know, I want to I wanna help keep the country safe. I want to help keep the country free. Um, I want to help make the country prosperous. Um, you know, and just be a Zionist, you know. And, and, the, and, the, and the rabbi was uh, happy to hear that. And he, you know, he didn't force me to declare any beliefs or anything like that. He just, he just, in his mind, I was just returning home. So he, um, and, and he trusted me that, you know, I, um, I, I hadn't caused any problems in the country or anything like that. Um, I didn't cause any problems on the birthright trip or anything like that. So, <clears throat> so one of the the head rabbis um, in in Arizona there wrote me a letter and um in Hebrew and just you know hey this 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 guy Jason Olson is Jewish his mother is a Jew and his mother's mother was a Jew and you know so please accept him um and his request for citizenship that was it just a very simple letter and um and then so like within 1 month I I got I had Israeli citizenship just under the law of return and um i i i felt no contradiction because um you know it was it was my identity for you know the the first my completely my identity for the first 18 years of my life right and so it was uh it was it it, uh, it was i was i think i was 22 when i had made aliyah or or got the uh, israeli citizenship so I was still a dual citizen, you know. I was there's there's nothing that was gonna make me uh, give up my American citizenship. I mean, that's that's a precious yet. thing. <laughs> yet, yeah. At the, at, um, well, yeah. I mean, I I had no intention of ever giving up my American citizenship. That was that was a precious thing that you know my even my Jewish ancestors had had sacrificed a lot to. Mm-hmm. Um, to come to America, I mean, they came to America with nothing. Um, after a pogrom, you know, a Russian, Russian pogrom where they, were, you know, just massacred and destroyed my ancestors' village, so shtetl, like fiddler on the roof, and they came to right. America. So um, that there's a great protection in in being American, and I, 
Um, I still, at least as far as uh, citizenship goes, I still saw myself as an American, and um, I certainly uh, had had no intentions of, um, you know, violating any any American laws or anything like that. I, um, but I, but in order to work in Israel um, permanently, I you know I had to get citizenship so I could so I could stay there and and support myself and and not just be on a tourist visa. Sounds like it's a lot easier to get citizenship in Israel than it is in the United States. Well, if 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 you're Jewish. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the law yeah. of return the law of return is 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 only for for Jewish people. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, and and some would criticize me, well, you had embraced the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so you're not a Jew. Um and you know, and I, I accept any any criticism about that, but um, uh, but my intentions were my intentions were pure. You could say, like I I uh, genuinely wanted to contribute to the country at the time, so um, so I didn't see any any issue with that, and you know nobody nobody interrogated me or anything. <laughs> they, you know, I just I was just uh, going to the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on the Sabbath, and that was really the, the main difference between myself and any other immigrant, you could say. So did you um, attend synagogue on Friday nights and then the LDS church on Saturday mornings, basically? Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah that, was my, that was my weekend, yeah. And then, um, yeah, that's just on Saturday I'd go and spend you know, the rest of the Sabbath with members of the church and, you know, cause a lot of things are shut down. And so, you know, so I do like a, yeah, I do a Shabbat dinner on Friday night with a Jewish family. And then I do like a Saturday dinner with a Latter-day Saint family. And that, so that's kind of how I, I, I gave, a, I gave both religions kind of equal time. <laughs> do you so. think that there were some people who thought you were Jewish and other people who thought you were LDS? Um, and yeah, so, probably, and they didn't know about the other, the other church or synagogue. Yeah. I, I mean, I certainly compartmentalized it because if I told the Jewish families that I was Latter-day Saint, then I, I, I realized quickly that they would become curious and then they, they'd start asking me questions about it. And then I, I can't proselytize. So, I mean, part of the BYU Jerusalem center, I wasn't there under BYU Jerusalem center, but I, I was still a, an active BYU student, <laughs> you know, so, um, when I was so there. So you were kind of hiding both religious identities in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, one of those, one of the agreements is you're not even allowed to answer questions about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Wow. So I figured if I, if I told anybody I'm a Latter Day Saint, then they're going to ask questions, and I can't even answer the questions anyway. So I, I you know, I might as well not not say anything because then I just, I, I'm going to put myself in an awkward situation where if somebody asked me a question, I was like, I can't answer that. And they're like, well, that's yeah. weird. You know? Yeah. And, um, and I wasn't there to be a missionary in any way. I was just there. I mean, I was there as a Jew, which is really complicated to understand. But, um, so I really saw no need to, proclaimed to everyone, hey, I'm, I'm a Latter-day Saint. They're like, wait a minute, I thought you were a Jew. And, well, no, I'm a Jew too. You know, it, just, it yeah. would just confuse people and, and also could cause problems for the church's presence. So yeah. I, just, I just identified as a Jew. and You were a double agent kind of. <laughs> well, yeah, just, I mean, just a religious, uh, a yeah, religious just a religious, <laughs> uh, yeah, per- perhaps, and. Um, members of the church didn't have any issue with that. They, yeah. they just accepted me, and um, and we had Jewish converts from all over the world, from you know Ukraine and Russia and uh, South America. I mean, you had all the Jewish immigrants from all over the. Even I live with like Ethiopian Jews, you know, and they they didn't speak any English at all, and you see, so you can only communicate with them in Hebrew. Uh, but you had members of the church who were Jews from all over the world, you know, for Europe. And um, so, 
especially if you go to like the Tel Aviv branch of the church. It's, 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 it was the most diverse branch of the church I had ever been to in my whole life. Still yeah. the most diverse. I mean, after all these, all these years, I mean, people from everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. and we also had diplomats there and from different countries. Um, so it was pretty, it was pretty diverse branch and, and it was really nice. And I, I definitely got along well with, with all the members and, and they accepted me. And I think, you know, I, I think even, you know, the branch, the branch president and the branch leadership, everybody's really hoping I would just stay there. Cause you know, I mean, if, if you're thinking it from those point of view, you know, someone, an, an active, you know, worthy Melchizedek priesthood holder, you know, you want them to stay there forever so they can be, provide solid leadership to the branch. But, right. um, so when I, yeah, when I eventually went back to the States, I think there was a lot of, a lot of grief because, you know, I'll hear somebody that can, you know, can stay here for decades and really be a leader in the Tel Aviv branch. So, so I, yeah, so I still, wh- there's mutual wh- grief on that, but. <laughs> so the LDS were a little bit more understanding than the you, you, you had to just keep it quieter with the Jewish people, basically. Yeah, I mean the yeah, because I didn't want to I didn't want to cause any problems, you know, right. in the in the in the country. That's not what I, I wasn't there to cause any problems. Um, you know, even even if I had just announced that I was a Latter Day Saint, you know, that could could be taken out of context or. Right. You never know. So and and I had lived I had lived almost my whole life up till then as a Jew. So it, it was not difficult for me to just be a Jew. <laughs> you know, I know I mean I, I it wasn't I, uh it was very natural. Right. Um it's it's it was more difficult it's more difficult at that time for me to introduce myself as a Latter-day Saint. Right. Because that was the new thing. Introducing myself as a Jew or just assuming it, that, that was easy. I, I, you know, I had lived, what, 90, 90 plus percent of my life as a Jew, mm-hmm. uh, uh, only a Jew. So I could, um, so that was, came naturally. I just, I, I knew, I know, I know, knew all the prayers. If I went to Shabbat, you know, I had all the prayers memorized in Hebrew. No, nobody... Nobody questioned anything. So, um, I yeah, I, I mean, I, I only really other Latter Day Saints would know knew that I was also a Latter Day Saint. So, right. um, you know, um, I mean, if the Israelis had looked into my past, then they could see, you know, that I had, they could figure out pretty quickly that I had served a mission, you know. But, um, but again, I just. Uh, I wasn't there to be a missionary, so, right. um, and so I think that that made everything fine. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Jason Olson, author of The Burning Book. Remember, I'm giving away a free copy, so sign up right now before you forget. Go to gospeltangents.com slash contest, and you could win this copy of The Burning Book. So sign up today. In our next conversation, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Jason's studies at BYU. I, I obviously completely disagree with that, but then the professor asked for a raise of hands of how many students, after all this course narrative, believe that Hamas rocket attacks are justified. And almost all the students raised their hand. This is at BYU? This is at BYU. Really? Palestinian Israeli conflict class, senior, my senior year, t- 2009. Um, so I am just, I am getting livid, you know, an angry Jew, <laughs> you know? And I, I, I try to get out of my little chair, you know, my little desk. I'm like fumbling around and I try to, and I finally stand up and I, I'm angry. And I, I look at the professor and all of my fellow classmates and I say, I am disgusted with you. How could you support terrorism? And then I sat down. <laughs> and everybody's like, I have never experienced this at BYU. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks for listening to Gospel Tangents. If you'd like to support me, please subscribe at gospeltangents.com or on patreon.com slash gospeltangents, or you can watch entire videos at youtube.com slash gospeltangents. I really can't do this without your support. I'd love to do it full time, and I need a lot more people that are willing to, to help me out. So I'd really appreciate that. So thanks again for listening, and don't forget to check out some of our other videos.